on this episode of Dual Survival. Matt, what do you see? All I see is just swamps for a long distance. Matt and Joe take on the Blackwater swamps of South Georgia. We need to find dry ground. Where predators abound. And the number one rule oh, is to get out of the water. He's moving. But even land is an illusion. Matt, Joe! Once you fall in, it's almost impossible to get out. Southern Georgia, dominated by wetlands. This region has over 600 square miles of blackwater swamps that are a patchwork of open lakes, cypress forests, and peat bogs. In this scenario, Joe and Matt take on the role of two fishermen who have traveled into the swamp. When their John boat hits a cypress root, they're left deep in alligator territory. This guy got himself in a bad spot. That's putting it mildly. Let's see what we have in this thing. We've got fish, fish in line. I can't really tell how much is there, but not that much. And we've got a lure without a hook. That's not good. It's first aid kit. It's cotton. Well, this guy didn't come out here with very much. There's something else. Yeah, let's see here. OK, here we go. Looks like lipstick. The lip balm's great because it's a, a waxy substance, so we can use that as a candle fire extender. We could rub charcoal in there, make sunscreen if, if need be. Um, it's also a good sealant. Ah. Oh. We've got a ferro rod. All right. So we don't have to spin up a fire. Yeah. At least this guy was thinking a little bit. Out here, you've got no currents. you just got still bodies of water. It's hard to figure out which direction to go to find your way out. It's going to get deep. Matt and I have got a huge challenge ahead of us. It's going to be very slow moving. You are not going to cover a lot of distance very quickly. What you're looking for is shrubbery that's getting very thick intermixed with trees. That's where you're going to have dirt. Hey. Looks like a little bit of dry ground right here. Oh, good deal. Let's check that out. <laughs> we need to think about now is shelter. When the sun does go down, it's going to be pitch black. You won't be able to see your hand in front of your face. So the plan is, is to shelter in place on this tiny little island, and at first light, make out for that ridge line. Quite frankly, I'm concerned about the rain, so something overhead for sure. Maybe we can at least get off the ground here, build a little bit of a platform. platform. Ooh, that's a good one. Let's put some bedding down on it, and then I'll, I'll, I'll figure out some kind of roof for us. Well, dude, there's tons of Spanish moss around here. Yeah. That would work really nice right here. We could put three inches of that stuff. Definitely would rather not sleep on that. Spanish moss is known to be full of chiggers. I think we should use those. That's a no-brainer. I mean, I, we've both had chigger bites. I could give a damn about them right now. Itching for three weeks is not something I want to experience. If we could tough it out with some other material, there's a little bit to work with. I'll find something for bedding, and then uh, if I can't, then let's plan B, the Spanish right. moss. We're going to have a little roof, but it'll keep us dry, kind of like a bivy sack would. These are the last of the ferns, bro. Oh, perfect. I picked this place clean. I just found the sod's actually really nice. It's starting to lift up. We might be able to sleep on it. It's still yep. pretty dry underneath. The under peat next to the shelter is pulling up, and it feels fairly dry underneath, and it's very insulative. And honestly, that's our saving grace right there. We need to maintain 50% security tonight. We're literally on a piece of dirt in the middle of a swamp and surrounded by alligators. So right. why don't you get some shut eye? You know, in about an hour, I'll wake you up and we'll just flip flop. OK. And the plan for tomorrow is when we wake up, we're going to just head straight towards that pine ridge. We got a lot more swamp travel, but we're going to get there. It's like crawling in a boat. Get some shut eye, bro. With a new day in southern Georgia, Joe and Matt plan to head in the direction of a ridge of pine trees that indicates higher and drier land. As we're walking through the swamp, lo and behold, there's about a 10-foot alligator about 50 feet away from us. This alligator saw us coming. This thing opened its mouth and shut it, basically to say, hey, you need to get out of here. He's moving. Oh, look at that. We're kind of 
exposed here because we can't really move out very fast. We watch it slip into the water. First, it looks like it's heading the other direction, but then it turns around and it's heading straight towards us. Matt, let's work our way back or yeah. past trees. At the bottom of these black water swamps lies 7,000 years of decaying leaves, branches, and other organic material that have built up to form peat. This layer of unstable matter makes every step difficult. I wonder if we can get up on this grass and make yeah. some headway. If you're ever caught in a situation like this, rule number one, get out of the water as fast as you humanly can. Last thing we want to do is step on an alligator or a snapping turtle. As we're making our way towards the grass, which looks like solid ground, we start climbing up on it and realize that this grass is wiggling and moving with the water underneath. It's actually just floating, suspended there. Wow, this stuff is terrible. Appear to be islands of grass are actually clumps of peat from the bottom of the swamp that have floated to the surface. Unstable and constantly shifting, Native Americans dub this terrain trembling earth. You're walking on something you know can break at any minute, and you also know this is where alligators hide. They love to live underneath this stuff. You're walking on top of something that you can fall through and literally fall right into an alligator's den. How is it right there? It's... Whoa. Whoa. That... Joe! He's down to his neck, and I'm trying to pull him out. It's, it's basically like trying to get somebody out of a, of a sheet of ice. It just keeps crumbling as you're moving along. Once you fall into one of these holes, it's almost impossible to get out. So you're using a lot of calories and a lot of energy to get out of this little mess that you're in. This is really, they're really dicey. Let's just stick to the side here, Matt. Oh, it's getting really thin. That's sick. I've never walked on it. <laughs> this is something I've never. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Matt and I are really struggling getting across this floating crap. He's in front of me making holes, and I step in his holes. I mean, it's a real exercise in futility. <laughs> Save the stick. Initially, when you get on this stuff, it's actually pretty fun, but the reality is, it's a lot of work walking over it. That looks a little more solid there, bro. Yeah. <laughs> And yes, it is. It's not wiggling. <laughs> nice. For someone who's been bopping around in a swamp for two days, to get your feet on solid ground is a huge mental boost to your game. Yeah, man. All I see is pine in front of us now. Dude, we got some pitcher plants right here. I guarantee oh, nice. there's water in those. Pitcher plants are carnivorous. They lure insects into a cup-shaped leaf that also collects rainwater making these plants a resource for Joe and Matt to rehydrate. Matter of fact, there's a bunch of them. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dude, that's a cotton mouth. Boy, he's a big one, too. Look at that. Let's back up right now. In Utah, we don't have cotton mouths, mostly rattlesnakes, but they all have that same characteristic. That diamond-shaped head it indicates that it's venomous. The cotton mouth snake also referred to as the water moccasin. Nice and slow. Can grow up to six feet long, and its venomous bite can result in permanent tissue damage or even death. Figure he has to be right in the middle of where our water source is. Normally, I would kill this snake. At least it's a food source. However, Matt and I are pretty strung out, and we're moving through an area right now that's almost like walking on a wet sponge. This is where you've got to have a little bit of common sense. We're going to leave this snake alone. We're going to find some more pitcher plants. Let's just keep our eyes open, dude. There's a few more of these pitcher plants. Yeah, this is great. This thing's full of water. Oh, yeah. This one's got definitely water in it. Totally potable, too. That's pretty cool. That's a good trick. Oh, man. Don't worry about the ants. Pitcher plants are actually carnivorous plants, like a Venus flytrap. So the water we're drinking, there's some bugs in it as well. So that's a bonus, get a little protein with the water. No go down there, man. What'd you see? I went over that way. There's a creek. It's definitely in a floodplain. This is as good as it's going to get right here. I mean, I like it right here. Kind of had an idea for just building a simple ramada here. If you got the shelter taken care of, why don't I see if I can round up some stuff for a fire? That would be great. I think I can use these palmetto bushes right here. Yeah. Done deal. OK. I'll meet you back here. All right, see you in a bit. 
This ground's actually really soft, but there's kind of a firm top layer. So it's a great place to anchor some saplings. So what I'm thinking is constructing somewhat of a box structure. We do have a fishing line, which I could use to support the poles, create some lashing, but it's also a precious resource. We might use it for something else. So I'm looking at this shelter, trying to figure out how to make this without any cordage. So right now what I want to do is create cuts that are going to allow the tree to bend at a sharp angle, at a 90 degree angle without breaking. What I want to do is go just a little past halfway and I want each bend to fall so it falls just on the inside of the next stick. Right there. So I've got a the basic structure here and I'm going to lay some cross pieces over the top. And the saw palmetto all around here is gonna be great roofing material. We can spread that up over these gaps really nicely. It's got the island flare to it. It's awesome. All of this stuff right here is what I want. Look at this stuff. It's dry as a bone. You know, a good way to test for moisture is to stick it to your cheek. You know, your hands have calluses and are pretty desensitized as you get older. But if you stick it on a part of your body like this, like your cheek, or the inside of your arm, like right here, you can feel moisture, and I don't feel any. So, great. What I'm looking for right now is a dead pine tree like this one. What I'm actually gonna try to harvest is called fat lighter, and it's down here at the base, because gravity pulls all the resins inside of this pine tree down to the base of it, and it basically coagulates and gets super concentrated. It's gonna be an accelerant to my fire. <sighs> Here we go. Here it goes. This is what I'm looking for. You can almost see the resin glowing off that stuff. That's what I'm talking about. Matt and I started this journey chest deep in a black swamp. And we've been through hell and high water to get here. So having a chance to dry out our clothes, I mean, this is huge because the number one thing in a situation where you're in a swamp is to get dry and to get out of the water, and that's what we've done right now. So we're out here in the southeast, and this is a place where a lot of Native American tribes use the blowgun. So now that I've got the materials that they used, I feel like I might as well go ahead and give it a shot. There's a lot of different ways to make the blowguns, but the, the main trick with them is figuring out a way to hollow out the walls. Every joint, you're gonna have a wall right there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and split the gun in half. Cane grass is split really easy. The key is to start the taper dead center. When you're splitting any material, it's important to go slow. Watch the split. Make sure it doesn't run off to one side or the other. So now we got two halves. The key is just cleaning it out. We've got a little bit of tin from the first aid kit. By poking holes in it, I can create an abrasive, sort of frayed spot on the back side of it. And by poking a lot of holes in it close together, I'm essentially creating a rasp. It's removing a lot of material. Most importantly, it's evening it out. What I'll do now is I'm gonna take the pine cone, I'm gonna drop a bunch of sand in here and just start working it out. Basically, you're creating sandpaper without the paper. It's nice and slick. That should get the dart to run nice and smoothly through there. Main thing right now is I've got to seal it. There's actually lip balm in this bat, and that's all I really need, just something to seal that air gap. All right, that's looking good. It's just a matter of pinching it together. We've got the fishing line right here. The birds are taunting me already. This is looking good right now. Now I've got enough binding in the center. I'm gonna add a little bit of the lip balm to the outside to seal it up. Now it's time to make the darts. The great thing about the darts is I can make it right out of the cane as well. And then I've got cotton in the kit and then I've got some, some braided fishing line. So I'm gonna use that and spin it around the backside. As I'm wrapping around here, what I'm trying to create is a diameter that's gonna fill up the inside of the blowgun. You know, I, I might not succeed, but it's a blowgun, it's a cool thing to make. While Matt finalizes his blowgun, Joe has established fire and sets off in search of some quick calories near the creek. I 
look down and I see some movement in the water and there's a frog staring right at me. Matt is trying to get a quail. But in a survival situation, you're going to eat anything you can. I've got to bag this thing for us. We need to replenish calories. <laughs> this is food for Matt and I. You know, it may not look like a lot, and it's really not for two guys, but it's better than nothing. I mean, there's some protein here, so Matt, I think, will be real happy with me right now. The lean meat on a frog leg can yield more protein than one large egg, which will help replenish energy that Joe and Matt lost while moving through the swamp. Yeah, I still hear him right out there. I can hear them up ahead. They're about 100 yards up, so I'm just slowly moving my way, trying to be precise and quick, but be as quiet as I can. I'm about 20 yards away right now. I'm slowing down. With a bow, that's perfect range, but I've got a blowgun that's got a fluffy tip on the back, so it slows down immediately. So I need to be literally within 15, 20 feet of this animal. Pretty good shot, but it looked like I just barely missed. I bolted out thinking maybe I could grab it, but they all took off. So close. So close, but no go. I'm excited about this frog. Yeah, man. Growing up as a kid, my grandfather used to make frog legs. He would beer batter them and deep fry them, so uh, eating frog legs is no big deal to me. Um, I just wish I had some batter. Ain't much, but looks good. I think it feels like it's done. You ready? I'll take a leg. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, that's sinful. That's really good. A lot of native people say you take on the energy of the animal that you eat. So if we eat frog, does that mean we can jump higher? I think so, man. Is that why some old-time hunters drink the blood of a deer? You know, take the spirit of the deer. Have you ever seen that? I haven't. No. Yeah, I've never done it, but. So what happens if we drink frog blood? I don't know, man. You might hop away in the middle of the night or something. <laughs> More room for me in the hooch, though. <laughs> that creek, I was thinking, it's very black. So it's running out of the swamp. Mm -hmm. So my idea is, why don't we follow the creek out, because if we do that, it's not going to take us back into the swamp. It's going to take us out of it. Right. I'm all down for a creek leading away from the swamp. Yeah, yeah. let's just get some good seeds. Dude, am I seeing things, or is that a bridge right there? Do you see that? Yeah. Oh, it looks like a road or a train tracks or something. Dude, let's check that out. Definitely man-made, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's a road. Yeah. Dude, a greater. Hey! Hey! You gotta be kidding me. Dude, he didn't even see us. Uh-uh. Yeah, he's backing up. Even a simple fishing trip can turn into a life-threatening situation. Do your homework. The key to survival is preparedness. It takes generations of knowledge and wisdom to hone a survival skill, so keep that childlike wonder and continue to learn the natural world before it's too late.